What's up everybody? Blue Game, Mr. Ron Price, the fish intimidator. Mr. Timmy from Kentucky. Got my beautiful girlfriend Kelly behind the camera and her fingers are cold, so I gotta make this quick. We're in Venice, Louisiana, headed out after redfish and nutria rats. We're about to do a little bit of cast and blast. It's supposed to be 75 degrees and sunny. It's 43 degrees cold, windy, and rainy, but we're gonna make the best of it. Not only is he the best red fishing guide, in my opinion, around here, he's also an ex-NASCAR boat driver. He will take this skier <laughs> 78 miles an hour across four-foot seas with his eyes closed. So we're going to put these cameras away, and when you see us again, we'll be fishing right now. <laughs> we are about, how far are we from the ramp? Uh, about 35 miles. 35 miles sitting directly at the mouth, the very entrance of the Mississippi River. We're after sheep's head and redfish. The water's really cold. They had an extreme cold front last night. And these redfish will move out here and try to get in deeper water. Well, where they're at now, they're sheep's head. So we're probably going to catch a mixed batch. But this is amazing. Like right here. Think about how far away the Mississippi River starts. And we're at the exact other end of it. All we're doing is fishing a jig head straight to the braid. I'm using the 30 pound Beyond braid. I've been using it now for like a year and really, really like it. This is my all around probably favorite rod that I use from Old Salty. It's a seven, eight, 15 to 30 pound, three quarter ounce. This is probably my like literally favorite combo they make. We're just dropping it down eight foot, hanging on. Hey Eskimo, <laughs> Eskimo Kelly. I literally just put the tent down. She was getting frustrated, wasn't she? Oh, yeah, well. Now you hook something that's gonna fight forever. I know, my fingers are frozen. Oh, the rock. Broke him? Yep. She broke him off. That was a big one, too. Look at that big old boat. Yeah. You win some and you lose some. So we're sitting out here catching sheep's head and trying to, Kelly just lost a, lost a big redfish. This crazy grouper catfish just caught. You don't understand, mama's gonna like that when you bring mama's that gonna like home. that one. That's why we caught it. Only <laughs> in Louisiana. Oh yeah! Oh, oh. oh. Got that, right? that thing. I feel like we're fishing in the Bering Sea. <laughs> That's a, Timmy just caught that crazy grouper and I thought that, he was digging straight down just like a grouper. It ends up being a redfish. Once we start hunting nutri rats, we're gonna be in a lot calmer, a lot easier places to film. And I know that's what y'all are here to watch anyway, so just stay tuned. You think he'll taste good on the grill? Absolutely, can't wait. Kelly's back here thinking about Puerto Rico. 80 to 95 degree beach weather, palm trees. As she's filming Blue Gabe in Louisiana, it's about 45. Look at this cooler, what we got already. Put that in some peanut oil and cook it. Oh no! Oh, catfish, my boy! Catfish got a catfish. All right, you guys, watch this. So right here, there's a ship under the water that sunk. Captain Ron's been fishing up front for a little while and he's figured out if you drop it right there, you typically get bit. Like that. Just like that. God, look at that limb shaker. <laughs> All you boys in Jacksonville who think y'all have a sheephead fishery, old Captain Ron's known around these parts to fill in the cooler full of big, Sheep's head just like that. These things are eating healthy. You see that dorsal fin? Come on. Can't help them. I'm not allowed to post on their Facebook groups. Because they all, that they dorsal. They'll lose their mind. Triple, triple. Nice. Look right here. That's your first one, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. That dorsal fin will wreck you. It's like they engage it to say, come on and try us. Golly, look at that big old fat, healthy 
sheep's head. We're going to be eating good tonight. Down there. All right, we're going to put this camera down and fill our full fill our cooler full of fish because Timmy came from Kentucky and he wants to bring some back. Kelly and I want to bring some back. We will see y'all when we start the nutria rat hunt and it won't be very long. All right, you guys, we took a break for fishing, headed in to go shoot nutria rats. Timmy has never been down here in the Gulf and never seen all these oil rigs. It, would you say it's mind blowing? It is, it's, it's absolutely mind blowing. There's thousands and thousands of little oil rigs spread out through there. You, you naturally think these big ones, like what we're standing on with this huge helicopter pad, but we just watched a big ship head right out the mouth of the Mississippi, which is so awesome. We've got ducks right here in a little pond that I just flew over and tried to show y'all, but of course they thought my drum was probably a hawk of some kind. We just wore the sheep's head out, didn't we? <laughs> oh gosh, it was all, it was nonstop. One of the best <laughs> things about the Fish Intimidator Lodge is if the redfish aren't biting, he's not gonna say, let's go to the house. He's gonna say, nope, let's go catch something. Triple tail, sheep's head, um, black drum, you name it. That dude, film down there and show how far up we are. I'll that dude it. right, that dude right there on that boat can put you on the fish, and he's got one of the nicest lodges in Venice, Louisiana. Super nice lodge. Accommodations are, are great. How do you well, feel when you look down right now? I don't like looking down. You already know that. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Ooh, I wasn't <laughs> bad until I got to this last flight of stairs. Not a handrail. Look at that. <laughs> This thing was made, pro oh God, that last step is messed up. <laughs> this thing was made all. a long time. <laughs> get you balance knock. Wait till y'all see when we get back to the lodge and show you just how many sheep's head we caught and we turned a bunch loose. We're gonna head in, drop the fish off, get a probably warm cup of coffee or something like that, load the shotguns up and go shoot some nutria rats. Let's go. Babe, don't fall too high up here. Yeah. Since you're the lightest, sneak in there and film some of that. Check this out. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's just binders of stuff. Like, does anyone want to know the Code of Federal Regulations? This used to be a kitchen. Oh, we could probably use some paper plates. Good old plastic forks. Oh, hold up. This is really interesting to me. Refrigerator. Look at this stove. That thing probably still works. Huh, popcorn. Ooh, I'm gonna bring Gabe some of this. Potted meat food product? Oh, this is still good. I'm bringing this for Gabe for lunch. Hey, stale cracker. What were we talking about yesterday with that pot of meat? Let's put it on a cracker, dude. Let's head to the lodge. And I also got myself a souvenir. I was thinking, of babe, get in. Here comes the police. Oh, shit. Oh. So we just got back in. Check this thing out up close. That's a pretty fish. Great. Fish. Mama's gonna love eating that one. Yeah, absolutely. What about you? Are your arm sore? No. <laughs> What's your name? Manuel. Manuel. So Manuel just showed up with some electric knives. He's gonna clean all these fish. Check them out. Some red fish, sheep's head. Sheep's head for days. Have you ever cleaned one before? Oh yeah. One Once or, or twice? One or two. Two. <laughs> Let's go shoot a nutria rat. All right, you guys, we are cocked, locked, and ready to rock. We got the Benelli M2 with the turkey choke. Most important thing is, is we have steel ammunition, no lead. You have to use steel to do this. And we have my little 22 with a scope. I'm gonna try to kill one with this because I wanna save its fur. Maybe make a rug or something or a hat for Kelly or something deer hunt because she gets real cold. Maybe a Nutri Rat hat will work. Luke would love it. I thought you would love it though. And then we got Mr. Timmy. Got him a big old sky bust and 12 gauge. Now we don't know how this is going to go down. Yesterday when we were fishing we saw a bunch. 
but it was never like we could predict when it was coming. They were just there. So we might go straight to shooting. We might be able to get some footage. Look at this though. He's got some federal pre premium black cloud. They just had a tournament down here. How many did they kill? Uh, 1,500 plus. 1,500 plus nutria rats. Is this for elephants or what? Small ones. Smaller elephants? Goodness, what a good, look, look at the size difference. Now, Ron was telling us that nutria rats are nocturnal, but we saw so many yesterday, there's no way we're not gonna see them today. Look at the size difference. We'll see if size matters after all. I've always hunted with a 20 gauge. I love turkey hunting with them, snipe, everything. We're ready. Man, I feel we should be red fishing. <laughs> the redfish are in here. You shoot that too now. <laughs> we can gig the redfish. Ron will take this boat. Where I'd possibly not take my airboat. Y'all see where they've been feeding right there? They eat all the marsh grass. They actually eat the root, which kills the grass itself. They don't know He's going bad. to the right. Come over here to the right, Timmy. Timmy's got the bigger gun. Oh, right here. Yeah. He's going to pop up in the grass. That joker was right there. He's going out the back. Turning on right there. Oh. Got him! First one with a 22! He's flopping, you may shoot him again. He got up, his head's up. See? Oh, he's good. <laughs> We're definitely having Nutria route with dinner. That was probably a 50 yard shot with a 22. Uh -huh. Nutria rat number one. Hopefully we can get a couple more, but even if we don't, we already got plenty to eat. Check that big thing out. For those of y'all that have been following me for a while, I've already done a beaver catch, clean, and cook. We're about to add Nutria rat. That was a pretty good shot with the 22. That thing weighs probably 15 pounds. How do you like to eat these things? 20 pounds just uh, won that rodeo. Like 20.8. How do you like to eat them? Uh, smothered in a, a gravy. Barbecue. Ooh, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Let's go just, get another one. Cook just like you do a rabbit. Slow cook. If you follow deer meat for dinner, which hopefully you do, you've already seen his Nutria rat video, and those things cause such devastation to the ecosystem there. Here, you can see that they don't cause as much, but I'm pretty sure they cause a bunch. They just had a big roundup where a whole bunch of people got together in a tournament. They killed close to 2,000 of them. That was a big fish. If I only had my airboat or even my pro drive boat, we would be loading the meat wagon. You see him? He's going right. He's in that center clump, so the next time we see him, he's going to be cutting the clump. There he is. There he is on the bank. Wow, they're way up there. Let me see. He's still there. He's sitting right there. He's scratching his back. Did we get him? No, I got right in there. Try to go over to this way. Oh, he's coming right at us, right down this edge. Oh boy, he's fixing to get it. Oh, oh, oh. He's in these bushes right here. Ready, get, him, ready. get him, get him, get him, get him. You got him. Number two. No, that's number three. Three. Oh, catfish. Can you pick up the phone, uh, one subacker? Yeah, we got him. Number two. Number three is right over there.
It's weird how they're in these little cuts like this on these little islands. Shot you shot about a foot over his head that first shot. Did I? Yeah. Once he stopped, it was on. He should have probably jumped out of them bushes a little earlier. Yeah. I ain't shallow in there. Oh, we need to go. Back or front? Or... Let's throw a hook over him. There you go. Yeah. Let's see if, salty let's see if old Captain Ron can catch a nutri rat. He's got old salty on too. We got him. Dang, that big gun rattled his finger. Look at that bad boy. Have you ever cleaned one of these? It's been a long time and I hate it. You'll do it for me though? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, we've now got four nutria rats. We've killed three in this video and one on Kelly Young's because she's doing a vlog video of this whole entire trip. If you're interested in doing something like this, Captain Ron and I are seriously thinking about teaming up and building a new lodge and get some dual motor pro drive boats and some air boats, which I already have one. Would you recommend Captain Ron driving my airboat? Highly, highly. Very educated, knows this area. More I assure I you, Dale Earnhardt Jr. could oh. not outdrive <laughs> Ron Price back there. Anyhow, you guys, these nutria rats are scattered all across this marsh. They have little like highways and they just swim from pond to pond to pond. If we had our airboat, it would be the easiest thing in the world but we don't, we have this bay boat. We came to shoot nutria rats, we have four. We will see y'all back at the house because we got a bunch of fish and a bunch of nutria rats and we're gonna eat so good tonight. Y'all, look at those chompers. I mean, look at that. Those things would hurt you. We're definitely gonna take this and do a skull mount. Now, I've already cleaned the nutria rat and I'm not gonna show you because I really don't want this video to get demonetized. I have never cleaned one, I've never watched a video of cleaning one I knew nothing about it this is what I did cut around the back legs cut a V down to its crotch down to his stomach to both shoulders I held it up pulled the hide right off cut the head off and gutted it it was that easy ten times easier than I was imagining now we have an awesome hide to take home and tan we're gonna clean this one and the other one but right now I need to get in there and start cooking because the way I'm gonna cook this is gonna take quite a while and we're leaving Louisiana tomorrow morning, so I'll see y'all in the kitchen. All right, I just got a little bit of vegetable oil in a nice pan, about that much. I'm gonna do this stewed down, but I'm gonna sear it first. Got some onions and garlic. Let them cook for just a second, just sort of get flavor in that oil. Look at the girls behind me. What y'all <laughs> sneaking up on? We're just watching. Hey, don't worry. By the time the people see this video, the whole world seen you eat raw fish. <laughs> Stir it up. Let it cook for a second. Now come over here. Y'all know what that is? That's a nutrient rat heart. You want to eat it raw on a crack it, dude? Ah. All right, so we're in the actual commercial kitchen and the fan right there is kicking it. So these are the thighs. I took the bone out just like that. This is the back strap and the tenderloin in one. These are the ribs and these are the front shoulders. I'm going to lightly season them because what I put in here is going to be a little bit salty. So I got the onions cooked down pretty well. I'm going to just lay my meat in there, right with them, just like that. If old stale cracker was here, he'd be like, that's what I'm talking about, dude. Just like so. Throw in the heart. Make room and try to get this whole back strap. The only thing that won't fit will be the ribs. I'm definitely not used to cooking on gas. Obviously by now you've been following me long enough, you see I have an electric grill. Alright. I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of Lowry's garlic salt, not much. Again, I apologize if it sounds like a jet engine's taking off, that's the fan. 
Now, I'm going to let this cook for about five minutes. Then I'm going to doctor it up some more, put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. All right, so my goal is to just get it lightly brown, just like that. Sort of lock in that flavor. Go ahead and flip everything. Let it cook for about, I don't know, five more minutes. Everything you're watching me do, shooting them, hunting them, cleaning them, and cooking them, is the first time I've ever done any of it. And I think this dish is going to be amazing. So we let it cook for about five more minutes. We're going to add just a little bit of this Creole seasoning. Just a little bit, about that much. We're going to add a little bit of Worcestershire. About that much. A little bit of soy. About that much. Now we're going to add just some regular water. Not that much. About a half an inch in the pan. Take this lid, turn this off, open this oven, set the timer for 45 minutes and then I'll check it. Alright, so I've been cooking them down for about 45 minutes now, which I think is going to be enough. I'm going to remove all the meat from my pan, just like so. Look at that little nutri rat heart cooked down. So now all I have is the onions and the juices that it's been cooking in. Here's my spatula. This is what we want to do for our gravy, which we're in Louisiana, so we might as well call it a roux. I want to turn my heat up. I'm so not used to cooking on gas, but I'm starting to get there. We we'll start out with flour. You always want to turn your grease up and have it hot. If you don't have it hot, it'll get real, real clumpy. And so while I was in there looking at seasonings, I found this stuff. And you know I'm going to use it. You don't want to use too much, though, about two tablespoons. Not like that. Just start stirring this stuff up. Come in here close and look at this. This will allow you to get all that goodiness, that crunch on the bottom of the pan. It smells really good. Yeah. So it's really, really important to have the heat up for this step. Take just water. Pour some in and start stirring. I really wish I had mushrooms, but unfortunately I didn't. You'll see it'll start to thicken up. If I was just making gravy to put on rice, I wouldn't have added so much flour because you don't need a ton. But this time I want this gravy to completely smother that meat. Just keep stirring. While you're stirring, you'll start to see the bottom of the pan. It's spotless clean. Good way to clean your pan, too. I'll let that go to a boil, and as it comes to a boil, it'll get thicker. So now I'm going to put all my meat back in. It's edible at this point, though. I haven't tasted it yet because Kelly and Timmy and Ron have been out there putting fish away in bags. We brought our vacuum sealer. Dude, we crushed the sheep's head. Not so much the redfish, but we crushed the sheep's head. I'm going to put the lid back on and let it cook for about another hour. We'll see y'all at the table. Look at this. That's that backbone Ooh. section right there. Mm. Man, it looks good. I even added the ribs right here. That is feeling. Big shout out to Mr. Ron Pikes and his beautiful feeling. wife. Feeling. They take care of us literally like we're their kids. All right, we're going to let Mr. Timmy say the blessing as soon as he sits down. All right. Go ahead. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for another good day today. Made a lot of good friends this week, adventures we went on. Appreciate you keeping us safe this week, Father. Take this food for the nurse for her body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, y'all dig in. Let's hear. <laughs> oh, Kelly, you're going first. Oh, my.
Yeah, you go first. <laughs> Ron's over there like, I don't know what y'all are talking about. I didn't touch it, I just touched that piece. Right. Pick it up, babe, and eat it like a chicken it. wing. Uh, That's not something you can eat with a knife and a fork. You're just going to pull it, pick go. it in there and dig in. What you think, Ron? It's just like rabbit. I'm going to... Better, better. Oh. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks of the squirrel. Oh, oh man. I wouldn't worry as much about the squirrel. This just seems gross. Well, I couldn't... I gotta get a bigger piece. You gotta just dig in. I know, it's kind of hot. Oh, that was dark meat. <laughs> It's good. Let me know your thoughts and then I'll try it. It's good. It, it tastes like a lot of the meat I ate growing up, you know, rabbits. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. It's not bad. It's just not something I want to eat again. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's Nutri, right? Yeah, yeah she's just saying that name. because she looked at the Nutri. The gravy. Oh, the gravy's really good. It's Bust me off a piece it's of this good. right here. It's good, though. It is good. But it's like I like rabbit better. Let me see something. Let me see. Is it better than your first time having it, or the same? I've never had one. I thought you. Hit it with the rice. Hit it with the beaver. Rice. Oh. Hit it with the rice. A little bit of the gravy, a little bit of the meat, and the rice. That's when I put a little more gravy on it, it was better. Yeah. Gravy. I will gravy. say that. The gravy would be good. With I the thought rice. when we're in Louisiana, we got to call it a roux. Oh really? <laughs> I think that's the heart. A little mm. nutri rat hair in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I did like three or four bites. I'm good. <laughs> Ron's over here. He's like, like Ron's like, y'all are weirdos. I don't even know if it's like normal. Yeah, there's not enough meat on there for me. I, I, I want it like the size of a deer. deer. I want the size of a deer leg. We got to have bigger ones. I only want to kill a couple of Ron's like, why don't we shoot a bunch? We're going to eat them yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyhow, you guys, if you're interested in checking out the Fish Intimidator Lodge, I'll have everything in the link below, like I said earlier. Thank you all very much for you're having welcome. us. Like always, Ron. My pleasure. When I met these people, they, they're just like we've known each other our whole lives. This lodge, this place, this fishery, Venice, Louisiana, absolutely mind-blowing. Timmy's first trip, what did you think? Oh, it was, everything was top-notch, above expectations. Great. Even Great for Venice, Louisiana. Because I'm really looking forward to coming. You ever seen Talladega Nights? When, yes. Is that what it's called when he said engage the slingshot? We engaged it multiple times. <laughs> multiple times. We come across the flat yesterday and it was about two foot chops and Rod, Ron engaged the slingshot. Yeah. I asked him when we got back to the truck, I said, how long would it have taken you to know if I fell out of the back? He goes, I would have noticed it at the boat ramp when we at got the boat ramp. Yeah. We'd have been back. He would have turned back around and go and get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys, we're getting up out of here. We're headed home tomorrow, then to Puerto Rico next week. I'm going to spend some time with the kids. Right now, though, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get out of shape.